But I just wanted to show you, this is my uh, kegerator. Um, I spent probably a good six months making all the fine adjustments to get, get it where I want it to be. And uh, I think I'm finally here to show you um, how it's come. So, it works, you can see. This right here is a non-alcoholic variety. My last two are my sodas and my other ones are our beer. You can see it, it pours pretty quickly. Pretty efficiently and actually it's pretty tasty. But very convenient. Um, so how did I do this? What is it made of? Um, can you do it yourself? So I reclaimed wood from pallets um, that I just got from the store they didn't want anymore. Uh, and then I sanded them, I painted them. Tap handles were just kind of a hobby sort of thing. I like to whittle them down a little bit. And you don't have to necessarily get those. You can buy regular standard tap handles if you want Sam Adams or whatever. Um, these are faucets. These faucets I got from homebrewstuff.com, about 30 bucks a piece. So if you want more or less, you can change the price of the uh, kegerator altogether. Drip tray is about 30 bucks. Um, and then all the little brackets and whatnot that you need here and there. Um, these little brackets just to hold the the wood together at the bottom because you don't want to screw directly into the freezer. That's a bad idea. Um, if you see this little number right here, that's the temperature in Celsius, what the uh, temperature is inside. It's designed to be a freezer, so if you leave it as a freezer, it's going to freeze your beer. This helps prevent you from that happening. Um, this is the installed one, so it took me to use, use a Dremel to cut through the, the, uh, the face on the bottom there um, and install that display, and then I wired it in. Uh, if you don't want to do all that, there is a plug-in variety for about 40 to 60 bucks on eBay. This one it cost me 20 but it's obviously more permanent and you can actually see the, uh, the display. These are just labels I made. Like I said, soda on the last two. It's a freezer. A lot of people actually call it a keezer. Um, so inside, it's so essentially this is like a, a fence around a freezer. And then on the top of the freezer, I put a wood collar. So this is, you see the wood right here? This is a two by four all the way around, about eight feet. I just bought one from you know, the hardware store. Um, and then I lined it with some styrofoam. And since styrofoam makes this really like nails on a chalkboard sound whenever you <laughs> glaze over it, I, I put uh, some silver duct tape on it just to, to help with that sound so it doesn't make that noise anymore. The, the ridge it's making right there um, in the duct tape, that's just the probe to see what temperature it really is inside. CO2 tank, it's green, that's the color for oxygen in the States, but um, whatever. So it's not oxygen, I assure you, it's CO2. Um, and then uh, it's got a United States regulator um, attached to it with an adapter that cost me about 10 bucks. If you're in Japan, you know, this would apply to you, but if you're not, you just get a US tank and no adapter in between and the rest is, is the same. Um, you see down there is the distribution uh, manifold. This is five little valves there that you just turn off and on. If you want to pressurize something, you can turn it off to the system and, um, and pressurize each one independently until it's uh, at the right uh, PSI. And then for delivery pressures, I've run it at four. I'm much happier with four than any other uh, pressure I've tried through trial and error. This is a five gallon corny keg. It's the only one that's five gallons in, in here. The rest of them are one and a half gallons. And uh, those are tap draft systems, um, tap draft uh, bottles. On the top is a modified version of the, uh, of the standard cap. So the, the molded cap rather. So this is the white cap you'll find on the BG Sturman website. Um, again, my parts list is on YouTube so you don't really have to listen to me too much on that. Um, other than just to see how it's done, um, you take the cap, you drill two holes in it, and then you put these pieces, these valved um, quick connects, um, the, the male ones, on top of the cap, and then you glue them, because um, it's basically like a straw fitting in there. It holds pressure very nicely. Go with these connects if you do anything else. Um, I haven't found anything better. Um, I think these are fantastic. They cost me about a hundred bucks. I tried to go the cheap route first with lure locks and whatnot. They don't have the right flow. They're uh, they're very difficult to go on, to twist on and off. They're messy. 
Um, and it just, it's ridiculous how much effort you put into something just to make it uh, cheaper. But you'll be happier with these in the long run. The wire grating is just to hold the, uh, the tappa drafts in place. You don't necessarily need that. I just kind of molded it. It's, I've seen wire grating shelves at uh, like Home Depot, things like that. It's the same kind of thing. I got it at a dollar store out here. This is what's inside the tappa draft. I have a dip tube. Um, this is just a metal straw that I got on eBay for like four bucks. And then uh, I cut it to the right size and then I put some of that tubing around it. I can see that there. Um, that's 3 sixteenths tubing. You just get that at Lowe's or whatnot. Uh, super glue to put them in. And then I coated them around the super glue with JB Weld to make them sturdy. And then I coated them on the inside with silicone. And so that you won't have any kind of plasticizer or whatever coming in contact with your liquid. Um, since they're upright, it's not, not very common that that's going to happen anyway. You just connect this to the, uh, the dip tube to the, um, the liquid side, which is the blue side in my case. Uh, so it works out really nicely. This, these have an auto shut off feature on them so you don't get messy. Uh, and you can also pressurize a, a bottle and leave it 